just a final comment, you know, these salinity projects, they require allocating 5% of your project to a habitat replacement project, if that makes sense. And uh, so the one we're focused on today is this one. Um, so here we are, the ponds, and uh, Delicious Orchard is over here. And uh, there's four sections here. Um, sections A, B, and C, they're all a little bit different, so they'll be treated differently as you'd see when you read those 19 pages. The bottom section here is the one that Pilot Rock has taken over. And so that's here, off no. this map? No. no, no, it's right here. No, right here, but it's over it's there. It's over here. Yeah, oh, Pilot. Is, yeah, yeah oh, forget I, about we're, the big we're way up. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is Yeah, well, mostly yeah. you were talking yeah. Pilot Rock. Oh, this is, is all part of the everything that's okay. Yeah. This is all town. Trying to get the context. Property. But they, they, this is their, we haven't approved that. That's just this. No, no, no. I'm trying to, to get the context yeah. of the landscape for Pilot Rock, and yeah. it's over here. But you mentioned what, what's the pilot? This is Pilot Rock. It's actually Section D. And it's sort of down so here below us to the, to the south, maybe slightly east, or slightly west. But anyway. Um, Cassandra has some handouts here. Yeah, so I, get your own I, I map. printed a map for, I didn't know how many people would be here, so I, I don't think I made quite enough. And behind the map is oh, a, I see. Is a yep. schedule that's part of the habitat plan, or the big overall habitat plan schedule. Um, so I don't know who else is probably helpful. Suzanne, oh, there's enough for you and Christine. Here's one. Barry, would you like one? We'll share one now. Okay. Okay, can we get one for the guys? Yeah, you bet. What's, what's the plan right here? Uh, we'll get to that. But okay. It, that's section it's, And is it in the context of like this wastewater treatment plant might not meet Reg 85 rules in 2027? No. Okay. But that's something we need to think about. Yeah. Oh, um, right. Yeah, I mean, that's your business. We've heard from uh, other folks that um, even if there's changes made to the treatment plants here, that it would not change the footprint per se. And that's kind of the key thing, and, and we kind of put this together with that in mind. So just to let you know about that. But um, let's see. Let me start by just saying that usually these habitat replacement projects either are successful or fail because of water. Mm -hmm. uh, because whatever species you put in here and try to get going, water is critical. And there's been other projects which have failed because there wasn't enough water. Now it turns out that here there's actually five sources of water. Uh, the town of Paonia actually has two shares of farmer's ditch that we're going to bring down for this field to the north of the ponds. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Then there's a couple of flows out of the treatment plant itself, the effluent from the process, and there's also a French drain that runs around this that collects water from trying to infiltrate the ponds. It collects that water, and so you have two flows of water out of the plant itself. Then you have a spring that's on town property that's never been filed on hmm. that's up over here Do you, i was i've been curious about the french drain system and where it might where it might convey the water does it come out this way it, it comes out right here along with the uh the more obvious one from the plant itself. oh it connects into the effluent yes okay uh, and i don't know exactly what the plumbing is there but that's where it comes out okay so there's those two uh the farmer dish shares that you already have there's a spring that we're going to file on on behalf of the town. Um, and, um, and then there's um, uh, delicious orchards over here. Jeff is real happy to see this going in for various reasons, but um, um, he says he's got lots of tailwater over here at this corner. And so we're going to put in stuff to grab that tailwater also. And, and then so the water is an important thing, and um, um, we hope we have that covered. You know, the water table here is at already kind of high, uh, but we'll need irrigation water for a while to get all these new species going. Once established, we're hoping that they'll be able to, you know, get into the water table a little bit, a little bit more successfully. Uh, anyway, all right, Steve, have I forgotten anything? <laughs> 
Well, I think you cover everything on the water. It's, you know, like I said, it's key thing on all of these is just having water. So we can walk around to these various places. Yeah. And everybody can get muddy and we can check them out and talk about them a little bit. Okay. One area down below here, below here, when they put these ponds in, it's dried this all up and you're going to see a lot of dead cottonwoods. Yeah. This would be a place where a guy go back in and we do that and we can use the water on this upper side to come down and irrigate all that. So that would re put back in what you got. Plus those logs there, they're dead stuff. Plan to take them down on these guys to mm -hmm. slow the water up and uh, back everything up. So you got kind of a dual purpose there. Now that's that's a good point in that you know there's a lot of scouring down here next to the river that comes in when the river runs high and it floods out part of this. So uh, Pilot Rock is part of the project is going to be taking a lot of this down timber over here, the dead and down, and moving it over here for some natural dams to try to catch some some sediments and uh, try to try to remediate that a little bit. You guys are a part of the ecosystem of the river now because the cameras and uh, rushing the log down here. It's been taken out once, but according to Travis before, it just didn't get sprayed, but that can all be done again. But but you guys are a part of the system. We've got endangered species with the cockerel. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. the yellow bill. The yellow bill cuckoo. Really? So you guys, have, you guys have got more than just a treatment. You've got land you need to take care of too. Right. Where, you know, if we go together, we can help you take care of all that. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so, uh, what about the uh, surround uh, other adjacent properties? It's all private land. Yes, so. the Lund Hall and Fraser properties. Yeah, it's um, all private have you guys been in communication with them at all? We haven't, but the thing is, is we have our credits uh -huh. to satisfy our loss that the pipeline is going to produce. So, there's no money and no motivation to expand this out. Okay. Now, it's, it's possible that some of those people, if we talk to them, they might be willing to invest some of their own funds, I don't know, and take advantage of this somehow, but we really didn't address it. What's the significance of the um, Schwartz Palm there? What is he going to be using that for? And does he need us to do this to be able to put his pipeline through and everything? No. No? He doesn't need us to put anything through right. for him. What he's going to use that pond for, I have no idea. Yeah, because I think he's used it for irrigation in the past, and it's part of his whole recreation plan, too. Okay. He, okay. He's interested in, in seeing this project go in just because it'd probably make the treatment plant look a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's going to enhance, you know, <laughs> people business. being on his business. For all the concerts, I just wonder about putting that high commercial use right next to. I, it just seems like... So there will be there will be a, a fence. We call it a temporary fence that goes around the whole project area to keep the um, um, the large herbivores out while the species are trying to establish themselves. Where could you say again where you're going to do the fence? It's going to be on the boundary. The entire yeah, the entire boundary. Right. Which now, is how many feet? Do you know. I'm not sure what the perimeter is. I know it's 32 acres. Okay. Thank um, you. But um, that's basically to protect those species, and we have in mind that as the species get well developed, we'll be pulling that fence. Now, the town might decide they want some of that fence left in place for physical security. I don't know. But uh, that'd be up to you guys. And just for perspective, um, in the future, I know we have, like maybe 10 years ago, talked about the bike path down Matthews Lane, down Lund, and across the river here. Mm -hmm. So yep. just to keep in mind, you know, if this all goes through, that as a possibility to just think like that could be also yeah. part of it. Now, along those lines, you know, the, uh, the town of Paonia River Park was actually a habitat replacement project uh, put in back in something like 2012 by the uh, Minnesota Canal when they went, when they developed their, put in their pipeline. Uh, one of the first salinity projects that basically went into this area. So the river park has turned out pretty well, I think, and there's lots of, I think there's some action of, of kind of expanding that further down the river with uh, uh, a, a nature path and some right. other stuff. Exactly. And so yeah, I mean, you could keep going if you had easements across various people's properties right. here. Yep. 
It's great questions. These don't correlate very well. You have different sections listed on this. Ah, uh, there's just one. Okay. This one is is now D. This is an older map. Oh, I see. Okay, so this so is the most So Cassandra always, okay. you know, she gets the up to date stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, is, am I reading this this uh, this right? That's an open ditch coming off of the effluent. Am I right, right here? This is a piped. This is piped right now. Correct. And we'll walk by this outlet uh, to the river right there. Right. Is that, was that your no, what's, what's this? Is that an open ditch all through here? Is that what that well, is? Proposed open we're, ditch? We're, we're proposing to have some ditching in here to move water down these areas. There'll also be some irrigation that goes in here. Up, up in this area to the north, this is all going to be drip irrigation. But we'll be doing things like that as we move water down. I just don't understand why that open ditch is coming off of right here. Oh, right there? Yeah. Because there's a main line, a pipeline, uh, running down to that point. And so this open ditch will tap into that uh, effluent coming off the plant. So it's not going to go into the river. Instead, it's going to go down That's the right. ditches for irrigation. That's right. And that gets into the water rights of this thing. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, that we can talk cool. more about. It's kind of like a constructed it's, wetland of yeah. sorts. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. You also have to change your divergence right now. The effluent <clears throat> off that goes straight to the river. You guys right. will have to, and we can do you that for you. Change that where you guys can use this here. <laughs> right. Around. Yeah, almost every one of these water rights has a little bit of its ins and outs. And as part of this project, we'll have a water attorney kind of straighten that up. About the only thing he does not have to straighten up is your two shares of farmer's ditch that are, that are coming down from, you can kind of see, I think, the cut up there, Steve, is that yeah. above 133. And it kind of comes down uh, almost across from uh, Delicious's driveway. Right, it's right at that at yeah, the foot we, of that road. When we get over to the other side there, we'll yeah, see it. Down here. We're actually yeah. going to repipe that from Farmer's Ditch all the way down through because this field up here, we want to put that in a uh, drip system. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pressurize the system. Yeah. So we're actually going to pipe it all the way down through Jeff's place. Okay. And he's, he's, he's allowed us to do that. He's okay. been a really good one. So I just want to present something is that the state is really pushing uh, towns towards mechanical plants, mm -hmm. mechanical right. wastewater right. plants, mm -hmm. and then we would need a place for biosolids, mm -hmm. and then a place to spread it. And so, but I mean, I'm, I'm all, I love constructed wetlands. I think it could achieve the same thing, but the, it's like a higher level conversation that needs to be had now. Well, so, but I, I think the biosolids too, we were talking about spreading those as fertilizers. So we had a conversation yeah. with uh, Travis yeah. about this. We did. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, so I think some of that has been figured out. I don't remember all the details. He planned on spreading that, but then Corinne yeah. told us that you guys are going to probably go to go where you're going to dry it and you're going to haul it out. So what she told us. Yeah. Is that something that might yeah, that's, that's still up for discussion. Is it? Okay. I mean, her thing was like human waste, and it's like yeah. it's fertilizer now, just yeah. like sheep dung and chicken dung Absolutely. and all the rest. No, so. it's actually more it's, than that. They're finding yeah, PFAS in human right. waste. Right. I mean, it's it's well, it wouldn't surprise me if they find that in animal waste yeah. as well. But no, the thing no. is, it's not a panacea. How about a it's not necessarily because you can have heavy metals, <laughs> so it's not. It's not a slam dunk, is what right. I'm saying. There, it has to be permitted. Yeah, right. It needs to be monitored. But you bring up such a good point that we have to make sure we're allowing ourselves a footprint if we have to go mechanical. Mm -hmm. Right. And, we and I think we need to talk them. with the CRWA or one of the agencies that have helped us create this sewer mm -hmm. pond property and make sure our interests are really protected for 50 years. This for is a 50-year proposal. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't, I just don't, I mean, I think it's great this plan and stuff but the one entity that's really been out of this discussion is the town um you know well, we and the specialists that we use we, we kind of developed a lot of this with yeah tracks. so it's a great start and uh so i think we've talked through a lot of this and as, as much as we could kind of look forward in time mm -hmm. uh we did that with his help mm -hmm. yeah seems like we need to seriously talk about what the future needs right. may be here right. because mechanical means no lagoons or it can mean covered lagoons there's a way to do it via covered lagoons but are we going to really? lock ourselves yeah. into a certain way of doing things that could be much more expensive i mean we have to look up yeah and the potential oh, yeah. for uh you know um, i know rick stelter really pushed previously before this was approved mm -hmm. for treated wetlands you know 
wetlands doing the treatment, mm -hmm. which is being done. Huh. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it would take here. And so that is an alternative that just didn't get addressed at the time this was approved. But I think it's still something to consider and mm -hmm. see if the state allows that. Right. But again, that takes acreage. Yeah. You have to you have to develop that treated that wetland treatment. But you're not going to get treatment. your PFAS and PFOAs. No, probably from not. But wetlands. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't know if they're there yet. But anyway, I'm I'm just. I, don't I think agree with Suzanne. I think we have to be careful to not it, in 2022. Um, cut ourselves short right. in terms of places where we can do what might need to be done right. based on EPA, CDPHE. Yep. And all this water is part of our enterprise, too. It's mm -hmm. part of the town-owned business. Right. And so, um, yeah. I don't know how that... I don't either. I have no idea right. how that might play into it. Um, so Greg, Greg Coulter from CRWA, mm -hmm. he's been coming out mm -hmm. and talking to us about this, and he'll be out like the 16th. 18th or something like that and maybe when he's out we, we should all just sit down because mm -hmm. he was saying that um what was he saying well there's there's some issues with the basically what the state wants to do is like reclaim all the wastewater and put it back into back into oh. potable water and so they have a three-year campaign <laughs> just to educate people mm. you know i don't think that's appropriate for here no. personally but you know that's kind of what they're thinking at the state level well i wonder mm. how that plays into the colorado <clears throat> river compact too and how many acres we are required to put back into the river via the compact well. yeah yeah it's, we, it's we a, might be an exception yeah right. you know yeah that, that, there there's a, a that umbrella and then there's the big umbrella yeah, a lot of uh, compact yep yeah. Okay. But, all right. Well, why don't we do the sewer So what, what's most relevant to y'all? Because like we has not been recorded. Yeah. And uh, so if you can uh, uh, figure out not the record but the rationale, uh, let us know. Um, dumps into the trash rack first. We take out all the nasty stuff that ends up in there. I will know. I think the uh, um, Sunday we have a high flow. Everybody comes to church Sunday. Uh, some things that we could learn by watching this water is like potential breaks in the sewage. Um, on rainy days, sometimes it looks like there's dirt in there. So I don't know if that's indicative, in, indicative of like uh, any breaks in our sewer. Inflow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But pretty simple here. What's our inflow? Gallons, like 100,000 gallons a day. About, Probably close to that, yeah. Yeah, about 100,000, 120,000 gallons a day of water comes through here. So it just comes through here, and pull it out all the uh, the nasty stuff. And this is still hand clean. Hand clean, yeah. We yeah. would love if yes. this was mechanically so clean. That is yeah, in that list of things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We could yeah. fall in. We could get sick. <laughs> oh my God. The wind. Oh, the wind actually. The prevailing wind is this way, so yeah, yeah. it doesn't really work. But we do it. <laughs> so, any questions about this? What, what's yeah. in the little building? Uh, okay. uh, okay. that storm water we have plenty of water coming through um, I think I think it's just bringing up our, our total suspended solids all that extra dirt coming through which yeah it's it's not it's not ideal so and I and I know the town has like like they they basically send a camera into certain areas every year but they can't cover the entire system in a single year so they're just doing the best you're, they can you're trying to upgrade though all the all of this, right? I mean, as far as the domestic system, the sewer system, well, yeah, you know, as, ideally, as you, you can, can have hundreds of millions of dollars to right. replace all the pipes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was, was that for more treatment plants? Also, that number was that just to replace the the, the collection and distribution? Oh, in the SDM report, that's yeah. just the pipes. That's just the pipes. Yeah. <laughs> could, yeah. Could you just explain how do you clean this out? <laughs> we uh. <laughs> So we put all of our PPE on, uh -huh. which was non-existent when we got here. Um, and we basically just use a pitchfork and scoop it out of the rack and throw it in the trash. And that's this end or this end? The other end. And we do that, we do that daily. 
Oh, wow. We have to do it daily. We can't miss it. Yeah. You throw it right into that trash? The trash? Yeah. Trash? That trash. That, that yeah. And, and where does that go? And it ends up going to the landfill. Okay. And that's pretty hot stuff, isn't it? Like, just right out of that? No, no. Because it's, oh. it's, really just, it's really just wipes. Okay, got it. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're clearing out of the filter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like all the other human waste actually goes over there. There was no PPE when you first got here, is that? Yeah. You were just expected to hike your pants up a little bit and get in there. I don't know, I don't know what the game plan was, but uh, yeah, we got, I mean, as soon as we mentioned it, the town ordered it for us right away, so it's not a big deal. So how often do you have to I've never seen it empty so far. I've been here about two and a half, three months. Okay. So it takes quite a while. Yeah. This is the most archaic aspect of the whole thing. Okay. What's this stuff? Just old yeah. Yeah. Is this for yeah. Well, we have, there's the wrap, and then, and then there's the plume. And, and so we could do, we could visually inspect the plume to, to cal calculate how much water is coming in, but there's also a sensor inside. We just go off the sensor. It seems to be accurate. Every once in a while, we'll, we'll make sure it's lining up. That sensor is coming off that cable in that little unit I see that's yeah. on top of the room. Yeah, and then it's just right in that room. Okay. And uh, so in, in that little room is, is the uh, all the breakers. Just for, for whatever reason, some 60 amp breakers were replaced with 15s. And we, we remedied that. We, we put the 60s back in so that we can run these bigger aerators. At some point, Travis was trying smaller aerators. There's uh there's the pont there's these little plastic pontoons over there. They they ran much smaller aerators and they had a paddle instead of a propeller. It didn't work apparently. I think he was trying to save the town money on maintenance with the with the aerators because they're they're not cheap to fix. And they go out. So so anyway, so from the trash rack, there's a line that goes into the first pond, and then it, it's a it's a it's a. They call it a facultative uh, lagoon system. So that means at the bottom, it goes about 12 feet deep in the middle. And at the bottom, it, it, it allows like all the solids to settle. So our total suspended solids is, is, isn't through the roof and going into the river. And then at the surface, it's aerobic. Uh, so the aerators are putting oxygen into the water to feed microbes to just, I'm not exact. They're eating up the nitrogen for sure. They're probably. I don't know what else they're eating up. Yeah, they're yeah. eating up the nitrates, the nitrites, and then carbon. Uh, it, carbon? Yeah, any any hydrocarbon they can break down. Oh, sweet. Yeah. That's good to know. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen any oil on the surface or anything like that. The uh, the aerators also uh, help to release the ammonia. That's another aspect. So we actually are emitting nitrous oxide from here, uh, CHC. Um, I saw an, an old email that Travis had. CHC wanted to talk to us about how we're mitigating nitrous oxide. You know, pretty intense greenhouse gas. Um, so when we got here, that aerator was not in the water. That aerator, the second aerator, the coupling was disconnected. Um, the third one actually was running, but we, we swapped the power back to the way it was it's supposed to be. And we need to actually... <laughs> cables have been cut. They were not disconnected. The power cables were cut. Somebody was obviously very frustrated with the system and they just cut cables. So now we got cables that are too short. So we're shifting the aerator over to the right so we can make it work. Or we're gonna, you know, shell out 900 bucks for another cable. We'll, 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 I think we can get away with just shifting it, shifting it over. Um, Last aerator was running, this aerator was running, that aerator was running. We're missing an aerator. So the design called for six? It called for eight. eight. And it called for two 20s, two 15s, two 10s, and two 5s, and then a polishing pond at the very end. We're starting to see duckweed build up right now, especially in the polishing pond where there's no aeration to annoy it. Um, 
we're currently seeing the bottom uh, turn with the heat, so we're seeing more uh, total suspended solids floating around out there. Uh, there's been no uh, sludge survey of, of these ponds, so we're gonna get like a $300 sludge judge, sludge judge to go out there and, and probe it, or the town can spend thousands of dollars, whatever you guys prefer. <laughs> oh, jeez! We'll be out on the boat sticking that in there, you know. Okay. With a coin. Yeah. Uh, but that'll give us an idea of how much sludge is at the bottom. Like we, we, our uh, two-year rolling average of ammonia is like uh, above the benchmark. So it could have been that the aerators were offline. That's why we weren't hitting that mark. Or it could be that and there's too much sludge at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we're we're getting to the bottom of it, and there's been no. We're just we're just puzzle masters out here, just figuring things out. So. You mentioned something about a missing aerator. Yeah, there's there's yeah. a missing aerator. So like, do we have, don't know what's at. Do you have any idea when the pond was last bridged? No, I don't. Think, there's no record. So it may not have ever. Been it may have never been. So I've gone through emails. I haven't found any emails, any any uh, like invoices, and I went through the the state records where a lot of that stuff can be uploaded. It doesn't have to be uploaded. Some things do, some things don't. I haven't found any records. Did you say that, uh, so when was the last time the sludge was? I don't think ever. I don't yeah. think we've ever done ever. it. Okay. They've talked about needing to do it. And yeah. And, and, and you. Wasn't this like 2013, something like that, when this was put in? 14. It was 14? Okay, yeah, we, yeah. And you said it's supposed to be done every yeah. few years? Is that or It just depends. It's depending on how much comes out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's any like. Record? Well, there, I haven't found a record, but I don't. I don't think there's any like standard practice. Or it depends on what's coming through right there. Mm. It's really gonna. And duckweed, whenever it dies, it'll settle and create more. So that needs scooped out every year, and we don't know if that ever occurred or not. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the fault like the. A lot of factors. I think you can see in, in, in your guys' uh your to your topo maps, you can see all the duckweed that was in the ponds. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet, but it, there's quite a bit of duckweed that builds up in here, and yeah, it'll fall to the bottom if it's not scooped out, and that'll that adds to the when you empty it. Sorry. More aeration would take care of that. When you say take care of that, what do you mean? The duckweed. Well, the duckweed's a good thing. It's a it's a good thing so long as we scoop it out and don't let it die and fall to the bottom. What it does is it, it eats up that excess uh, nitrogen. Okay. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it. So first the algae starts to eat it, and then the duckweed starves the algae and, and also like prevents prevents sunlight from getting in and allowing that algae to photosynthesize more. My understanding is duckweed can also be used like after it's harvested. Heck for yeah. Fertilizer. Heck yeah. I want it for my garden. Exactly. But yeah. I need to test it for E. coli and things yeah. like that before right. I can yeah, use it in heavy um, metals. Somebody from Canary right. Soils might be interested in able to. And he's right next door. He is. Yeah. 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 So that would be a really cool collaboration potentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, would the whole lagoon need to be emptied to get the sludge out, or can you do it? We can divert all the water out of this one and do a single pond at a time. Okay, so you could do that to get to the sludge without Yeah, there, there's other ways to do it where they have dredges with centrifuges, mm. and they just suck it all up and then spin it and then okay. put the water back and take the solids out. So I guess mm -hmm. we just have to like price that out and see mm -hmm. what the best option is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once you get the sludge judge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Get the sludge judge. <laughs> it's a perfect. It's like a title. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's a long, transparent tube with like, you know, an inch gauge on it. And you literally, it's so crude. You just go out in the, every like 25 feet, you go out and you just stick it straight down towards the bottom. And then you pull it it's out and see on the yeah. 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 I didn't know what it was either, but you had it in your report. And I actually had a note. Okay, what's a sludge judge? <laughs> and who's on the sludge jury? Yeah. <laughs> What's the sludge word? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, that like, needs to be done. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's basically it. It, it like, it goes this way, it comes back up to the top here, and okay. then it, and then it goes, and then that way we have detention time, and ends up in the polishing ponds, and from the polishing ponds, it then goes through, oh, okay, well there's a little more, so we'll go back, <laughs> back to the other end. I forgot about the chlorine. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so it's, a, it's a serious question. Yep, on parallel. Okay, cool. it, well, it, 
It actually, right here, we could. Add, it it could be parallel. Okay. It's, it's set up so it could, and I don't know really the the benefit of mm -hmm. doing parallel or in a series. Uh, okay. But right now it's set up in a series. Okay. Cool. And yeah, like That's like Jordan was saying, if we wanted to drain one side, we just divert it. Mm -hmm. And so. Is there something that's happening in this pond that is not happening in this pond? Are they doing different things? This is going to be the worst stuff coming through. That's okay. coming straight from there. Okay. So this needs probably the most aeration and the most actually settling. Okay. And then we have baffles in the middle. Oh, yeah. So each one is kind of continuously yeah. getting bigger. Okay. And then it comes here and then round two. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. another baffle. And then when it gets to the polishing pond, it's pretty probably about What do you do? Yeah. Yes. And all that is, and then, and then maybe Jordan can repeat what he just said about the testing. Oh. Yeah. So this is our effluent. This is a two-inch partial room, and from the stock gauge, we're able to grab a reading on it to know how much flow is going to come. We have a sensor that plays. Gadget in there. Um, after it's coming through here, it's going right over here where we're chlorinating. And then from this chlorine, it's going into a serpentine style thing that goes back and forth and it allows contact time with the chlorine. And then it's going into that next vault over there where it's going over into another basin where we're putting in sodium thiosulfate which is taking the chlorine back out of it. Yeah, yeah. So it's been disinfected, now we're taking the disinfectant out before discharge to the river. Okay, so is there another cloak on There is no fluid in that one. Okay. This, this kind of lets us know how much is already okay. coming out. Do you, you guys have a historical record of the amount of water I'm sure that that probably yeah, we, we, we take, we we take, take them every day. Yeah. So it would be nice to see like one year's worth of that. And this is part of the water that uh, we're interested in using. Oh, it's part of the water that we really want to use. Actually, for all of all the flows that the town has, this one is the best record it's, kept. It's, yeah. Yeah, good yeah, it's wild. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah uh, that's, that must yeah. be why. Yeah. But yeah, that was one of the things for the, um, the moratorium study. The, this was the one data point where they had a, a single file handed in everything that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. easily done. It would just be a good time to mention the other flow uh, from the French stream that goes all the way around. Where, where yeah. is that at? And is that monitored at all? My best guess would be right over here. <laughs> That's coming out of Jeff Schwartz's place. So we actually, we have different, it's not really different permits, it's the same permit, yeah. but we have different standards for the amount of water actually being discharged. Mm -hmm. So right now we have less than 0.2 NGD, which is like 200,000 gallons a day. Mm -hmm. So we run off that. And now I'm assuming as we get higher in the summer, it's going to get higher. And then our max capacity is up to 0.495, which is just under 500,000 gallons a day. So by doing that, it would take away from, I'm assuming it wouldn't be considered like if we got up to that 0.3 MGB, if you were taking away some of that, then it would still put us in that level of 0.2 because it wouldn't be going straight to the river. Yeah, basically we use whatever you guys discharge, you know, and your operations, if it, if it affects it, you know, moves it up, moves it down, uh, we're not in control of that, you know, so we're just going to use what's going to be discharged. Okay. I would think that since it's not going directly into water, into, what well, I'm not sure what they call it, the state, state water, that you don't necessarily have to, it would be, like, it would help out with our high flows by making it still where it's basically only a low flow. To okay, start. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's fine. I mean, we have the aggregate of five water sources. And um, uh, again, probably our demand for the water is only going to be there for the first like four to five years. Because as these species get established, 
we see us cutting back on the required irrigation. So during the first five years, are you planning on any Might be minimized depending on you know your operations, but you know your operations are your operations, and in principle, you guys own all this stuff out here too. Right. So so um, you know you do whatever you have to do, and that has to be sampled. Yeah, he was, that was part so, of what he was talking about. Yeah, but, but so that would still be the town's responsibility to sample what you're discharging off of that. Yeah, I mean, remediation anything that has areas. to do with the treatment mm -hmm. operations, yeah. that's mm -hmm. town's town. Yeah, I just want to make sure you weren't taking over any responsibility no, for the no, discharge no, no, to the no, river. No. And, and does the town of Paonia have any requirement to discharge so many gallons to the to the river uh, like the every year or something i haven't seen anything about Doesn't that, that but, the flow stations the gauging stations that we have uh, well i was wondering more about the colorado river that has compact. to do with yeah. us yeah. knowing how much we're putting out uh, okay. to go off that okay. permit level yeah. tell us what's going on down there okay all right section b so <laughs> pilot rock section So one of the first things that's going to happen is they're going to come in and, and treat this fresh water coming back. So is there rest Not too much that I see. Mostly rest. It's mostly Russian olives. And they look young Russian olives. Yeah. Because this was one of I think this was one of the sites that the conservation district addressed. Oh. Ten years ago, okay. but it just needs to get a tree. They have They have trees, not surprising. This is going to fall in the party. There's no plans to plant it there. No, no, no. Yeah, just keep what's here. Even D. So, about right here is the dividing line between section B and D. And this is a uh, decent canopy for the yellow-billed cuckoo. Oh. So we've been consulting with the Fish and Wildlife Service about, about that, and it's pretty neat. Pretty neat habitat already. Um, but what we want to do is take the, some of the scoured areas that you can see on your map, um, and the the yellow represents where we're going to put some dams, and this isn't exact, this is just approximate, um, to, to try to capture some of the sediment during high flow periods and then plant willows on the other side of the logs. Um, and we have some other uh, trees like hackberry and uh, I believe serviceberry, um, New Mexico privet, and three-leaf sumac. There's about, um, there's about 10 of them. <laughs> yeah, alder. So we're going to try to increase the diversity. So what you see right now is pretty much a Russian olive and cottonwood. And we're going to try to bring some diversity in here that's beneficial to the wildlife. So we can just start walking through the scour area and maybe mm -hmm. show Sandra? you the top part. Yep. So right here approximately is where we're going to uh, divert the affluent from the, from the treatment plant and divert it into the surface dishes. Right. So, I'm not sure exactly where that spot is, but we're close. Yeah, so it's probably, it is probably about right in yeah, here where the line is. So the scoured areas, was that from river overflow and flooding? Yeah. That, and so what are the chances that we're going to flood again and kick all your stuff out? Well, That's a really good point. We thought of that. We'll, we'll put in the dams to resist that as much as possible. So people have experience with that, kind of know what they're setting themselves up for uh, with respect to building those dams. Okay. Uh, if they know what to do. But, That's Hudson, right? Yes. Yeah. Dam. Yeah. Um, so. So we'll see. And okay. We could have some real high water years. Yeah. We could. We really could. I and you'll get a better sense for that when Cassandra gets us back over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And we picked some sites. The sites that 
we pick to plant, we'll yeah. show off some others. Hopefully, some higher elevation. Ah. Okay. In front of us. Yeah. This is the absolute right here, Bob. Yeah. Oh, okay. Usually we always see something like a corner for half centuries, but we don't have any reason to see it. Yeah, but... So it's... Oh, that's a cotton. Oh, when they flush the Peony Reservoir up there, they're sending. We can walk out there, but that's we're we're gonna do two things. We're gonna take, like I was talking about, and dam, put dams up, and and plant behind them, and then also we're gonna bring diversity in with new shrubs, different species that we hope will persist even if they get flooded. And this is one of this meadow here is one of the initial planting areas. There's four planting areas. So the pole planting? The pole possibly. plantings will be what we use for the behind the logs. Okay. Yeah. How, how, how are those open ditches look? They're gonna be vegetated? You know, I don't think we're, we're gonna do the ditches. Okay. We wrote it into the plan. I think what we're gonna try to do is, is use pipe. Okay. Because of the cobble substrate, um, perforated pipe. Probably oh. not. Probably right. just pipe it to where we want to where sell want the sharp it. lines. Okay, direct yeah. piping. Yes, on the surface. You mm, might have a main line and then a bunch of manifolds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. So, do you guys have anybody who's going to be like in mind who might be doing the work, like the physical work? Yes. So, so I don't know about pilot rock, right? Uh -huh. We had, what was his name? Um, uh, Anderson. Um, uh, Hudson. Hudson. Dan, Dan, Dan Hudson. Dan Hudson. Dan Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to take all the evasive stuff out, like the tamarack and all that. He'll take all that. And he's well known for doing all this. He does really that, good yeah, he's, That's his deal. That's his deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Dan Hudson. And then the Western Slope Conservation Center is also really involved. And um, Jay Carter and, and myself were hoping to do the job. We haven't been hired yet, but working maybe with Mike or for Mike. Um, as far as just the plantings and, and um, tending to them. And, and the removal of little bits. Or is that going to be mainly Hudson that does the removal? I think Hudson will do most of the removal. Okay. So are you looking at mechanical removal or both yeah. mechanical and then um, application it's, it's of mechanical, herbicide? It's mechanical treated then with a chemical. Yeah, so then we have to talk about which one. Yeah. yeah. This Jake that's helping out with the conservation, he's the one who uh, did the one on the other side. Too. Oh, okay. He's really knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's yeah. really a good guy. We're really pleased to have him on board. Hey, so, good. Yeah, he's worked quite a bit with uh, Ralph Dale and Sandro. I don't know if you know him. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So Ralph did a lot of removal of brush and olive and tamarisk out here over the years. So um, I was reading in the proposal, they were saying that for five years um, um, you maintain it and then the town may take over the maintenance at that time. And so what's the, I mean, I, I suppose that'll be, that would be nailed down closer yeah, in to the, in the maintenance agreement that we haven't got to yet. Uh -huh. and, you know, we hope to have these other agreements first so everybody has mm -hmm. green light. In the maintenance agreement, we'll hammer that out. But um, So there's money for maintenance? There is money that we're going to maybe. save back for maintenance. Okay. The ditch companies have a 50-year responsibility of oversight, but then the nuts and bolts of how the maintenance is done, um, hopefully that will, you know, if everything is thought out properly, the maintenance should be something that decays out mm. because you get some of the species will fail probably but some of the others will uh, take hold and uh, become more resistant to the, resistant to the river and whatever else only concern that comes to my mind is um those pipes getting clogged mm. anything yeah. it could be That's, like so sanitary napkins or whatever you know yeah the irrigation systems are going to require the most maintenance um mm. the good news is that um 
hopefully we can sort of decommission those as things get established. But um, some of it you may not want to ever decommission, like the drip drip irrigation that's going to go into that field above mm -hmm. the, uh, the ponds, to the north of the ponds. What's the lifespan of a drip system? Uh, 50 years or more. Mm -hmm. Of like Medifem or something? Or? Yeah, one of the standard manufacturers of plastic. This is going to be buried drip, mm -hmm. so it's completely out of the ultraviolet and mm -hmm. the cows and whatever else. So usually they bury them about eight inches below the surface. And um, so, you know, again, they're supposed to conform to reclamation regs, which is 50 years for everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only on the irrigation side, but also on the habitat replacement side. Well, in the, the piping through here, it seems like having things like the plant here that it's not going to be an issue because it's going to come off the runoff in the tunnel. Well, in theory, but some, sometimes, like, we don't know how, if we're not here, we don't know how well it's going to, those, those track tracks are going to be emptied. It's kind of a vulnerability and it's a weak link. It's like, it really right. takes somebody who's actually on it with integrity to take care of it, otherwise. So we really need a mechanical system that's going I to do that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't <laughs> well, I think these guys need to basically file for overtime. <laughs> <laughs> we are, yeah, we're getting at least 10 hours per pay period right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to have enough. jokes. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. I mentioned it. So we could walk a little deeper okay. in here just to give you a more fuller picture of what this bench looks like. Yeah, I think you ought to take them to the property line. Okay. Maybe they should hire a part-time. Oh, so do you know what that flag is for? Yeah, we flag. Oh, okay. This will be one of our first sites. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. We have like a... Mm -hmm. Apparently not. <laughs> 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 We're working on trying to figure out the most efficient way to water. Oh, yeah. 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 Rather than the and we think that it's not going to be a few years. And uh, well, it's a few years. 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 Yeah, to try to help kind of reforest this place and add some diversity. We've got a hundred trees that we're going to put in. Oh, wow. Nice. Around here. Your project. I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> it is a hundred trees. So, so that one shrub we were looking at uh -huh. the other day that was just growing out here naturally, uh, the, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's also on the roof. It's a... Uh, uh, no. I've got that little uh, phone uh, plant identifying app on my phone if you want to check it out. <laughs> yeah, we should have, if we had the document with us like okay. that, we could do that. I think that's, we're, we're to the property line now, I think. Right? We're going to see the fence post there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we could head... Um, yeah. Is everybody good with that? Okay. Ladies, oh, yeah. stop the oh, okay. Yeah. And um, Jake Carter and I came out here and selected some planting areas, and this is one of the places that we thought would be good to establish more diversity with the trees. So we've got trees and shrubs that we're going to be putting in. The shrubs will go in, in four different areas in this bench area here. The diversity, we want it to be up, kind of up gradient, and hopefully over time it'll spread and propagate down. Yes. Do, do you know where the uh, like 100 year flood 
zone is? Does it come way up here? It's way, way up, up there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, that's obviously something to consider when yeah. investing yeah, we, in new plants. Mm -hmm. We talked about it, and we do think you know it, it probably, hopefully, will be able to establish the, the shrubs and trees to the point where if they flood, they can survive. Because you see what's, what's living here is, yeah, mostly cottonwoods, willows. But we'll see some other stuff as we go towards the river. Mm, yeah, and, and notice that there's a lot of stuff that's planted slightly higher where the soils are. You know, they've made it through. Yeah. Mm. You know, who knows how many big floods. Yeah. So if you fence it off from the elk or the wildlife, where are they going to go? Uh, over they to the farms. For the... Is it going to put pressure on surrounding landowners? Or yeah. Yeah. Fences around the clustered oh, plantings, yes. okay. and then be and able then we'll to take them down. Right, yeah. but we're not going to fence section B. Okay. It is for the wild. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can see. <laughs> Cassandra, how mm -hmm. much like public access is encouraged or not at all, or it's fenced, or it's just a oh, right area? That's a great question. I, so I think personally, because we're doing this for wildlife, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's we don't have any public yeah. component to our plan. Mm -hmm. Um, but I suppose if, you know, we don't include public, the public park in here, that's something that's desired in the future. There's a trail that comes through, for example. Yeah, yeah there's no, it's not really addressed. Mm -hmm. It's on the down low. <laughs> For those who need to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to have the right GPS on your phone. Uh, so, Cassandra, you should mention our uh, truncated uh, uh, construction crew. Yeah. I think they just do have Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, to. So. She mentioned. That, um, yeah, just to be clear, we aren't going to fence this, oh, this section. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, the fencing was is indicated here with the little dash. Yeah, what we're going to do is cluster it's the plantings and fence around the clusters. So oh, so you're going to oh, have little mosaics temp of temper. plantings that you yeah. can protect okay. easier? Yeah. And then we're not going to fence the cottonwoods and the willows. We're just going to, the pole plantings, we're just going to try to encourage more growth. So okay. you can see these, really this good. is a good example of an area that we're hoping to establish more uh, shrubs and, and trees with the cottonwoods mm -hmm. and the gangs. Mm -hmm. And um, also because of the yellow-billed cuckoo that comes, that migrates up here um, from mid-May to the end of August, roughly, um, we're not going to be constructing in the summer. Mm -hmm. So we'll be avoiding that. Mm -hmm. Where do they nest? Do they nest on the ground? Sort of like right behind you, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, wherever you see a Russian olive growing into a cottonwood. Yeah, they just like bramble. Oh. Mm. oh. Mm. They're rare. They're an endangered species mm -hmm. protected by the mm. Endangered Species Act, mm -hmm. federally protected. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I don't think there's been any sightings here, but there's been some close by, just down or up river actually. Mm -hmm. So, could people not develop those lands if they were sighted there? 
federally it would be a mandate it against development? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. I think they, they would have to consult with the Fish and Wildlife Service, and they might have to pay or do some mitigation. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quite I don't think they can force a private property owner unless we had something. And is there going to be any issue well, with the um, traffic on the road down? Or yeah, that's a good question. She's asking about the traffic, like the yeah, industrial the traffic or commercial traffic, because potentially. We're talking about traffic come down the street. Yeah, road. yeah. Mm -hmm. With the whole. Well, I don't, part I don't of the think so. Yeah, with with our construction, wildlife. you know, the pieces of equipment are not real large, uh -huh. and um, um, <clears throat> we're going to be outside of the endangered species um, um, time frame for nesting. So, um, you know, Steve, what do you think for for all the logging? Yeah, all the you know, we're just going to be using a skid steer, so it's all going to be small. Yes. Oh. Once the machinery's down here, it'll stay. It's not going to be transverse and back up and down yeah, yeah. the road. It'll just stay here. You know? <coughs> so I really, the only thing on the road would just keep people coming into work in the morning. Right. You know? So I really don't think that would be a real issue. Okay. Yeah. And there won't be any heavy equipment. No, it won't be. You know, skid steers are not, kind of like what's up the tree. There like, would never even be a dozer or a cattery. I mean, it'd be a no, skid steer. Mainly skid steer. Yeah. Might be a little track hole or something. Yeah, I was going to say a little excavator it's all be small. He's all got, he's got small stuff. It's so damn good. And he makes sure that he doesn't bring weed seeds in. It sounds like he's a professional. Yeah. He's done a lot That's of his, yeah. yeah so so he's, 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 he's had lots of opportunities to get in trouble before. So. <laughs> <laughs> he probably knows all the rules. He's learned from his mistakes. <laughs> all That's that good. Stuff. Mike you Zeman know? did all this for us and stuff. He's worked with Dan a lot. So he really highly recommends him. Just mainly because he does a good job. So. Yeah. The conscientiousness about bringing in weeds is a good point. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. all part of the um, okay. scope of work, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it's a mitigating measure. Mm -hmm. I noticed the, there's some burr buttercup getting started up there. And I'm wondering, can they track weeds from our property further onto our property if they're not careful? If they run over a stand of something and yeah. there's mud on, in the treads. I don't know. I'm yeah. like overthinking it. Well, what we're for this particular section, we're yeah, we're gonna have to think about that, and because we are gonna use heavy equipment to build those dams, so I think that's a good thing to look at. Where Do a cross, no cross contamination. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Is, is that anything good for, else? Good Should for we, section D. Any yeah, other questions? Any questions about section D? Um, for the dams you guys are talking about putting in, that's a uh, slash from whatever's taken out or something that's already down, correct? Yes, that's mm -hmm. right, yeah. I'm Dead sure. and down. Right. There's an opportunity right there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that was a big one. There's, yeah, there's a big one. Well, we stepped over one on the road on the way yeah, down. Yeah, we did. Right. So all of that stuff, yeah. I mean... We got a section over there. I'll show you guys that. Well, there's a lot of dead frogs oh. because they died because of mm -hmm. you know, the that's, that's, that's often yeah. section. Yeah. 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 Yeah most that you'd like to oh, do you know for a buffer or if, if for instance now? the town needed to take a portion out for their sewer pond system yeah. is there any flexibility there with your plan okay. if, if it affects the scoring well i may have there might need to be some negotiation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because your score right now is set up for everything here. Well, I left that yeah, there. Yeah, between the two ditch, God ditch damn, companies. I didn't shut that gate on that upper end. Using the total score completely. Because I was mm. running late. And, and having to do one, one for one. I think there might be three yeah. credits extra. So I don't something care about but, but, um, yeah. Yeah. I think And does the property have to be contiguous? Okay. I think I already I'll asked that. No, it doesn't have to be contiguous. So technically, if the town wanted to help you out with this, but we didn't have enough. We felt like we needed to keep more property somewhere. Could you look at that other town property by the high school as to continue like we, somewhat of a wetlands there? We've, we've already done that. 
I mean, can they be combined with each other, like this one and that one? Well, in principle, yes. Okay. But the problem with that property, which we looked at already, is mm -hmm. all the players involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting them all to agree was mm -hmm. kind of like Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We kind of liked that project. but. Okay. So it, it relied on other people? It wasn't 100% oh, yeah, was. town property? Okay. Yeah, there's private, there's high school mm -hmm. has input, the town. Seems like there was a fourth. Like developer. Developer. Evo, the developer. developer. But, but I mean, if, if you scaled the size of that down, would you really need the input from all those people? If you just we had to go had for to do a little swap. that whole size okay. just to get the score up because okay. most of this score is coming from the water sources that we built. Okay. Uh, okay. That one did not have that. Well, good. Okay. And so we had to go large in terms of acreage in order to okay. get the uh, score that we needed. Okay. I guess I'm being cut. So you can't take that and combine it with this and maybe just take por a portion of this out if we needed more for us. Well, we could. We could. Pond. You know, let's suppose that over by the high school, if yeah. we were just talking about the town property. Yeah. I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how much yeah. And you guys came back and yeah. you wanted more That's acreage for whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I think I we could combine them mm -hmm. uh, to make up for that lost score. That's possible. Yeah. This, this, as long as yep. these... The, wa the major water sources that we talked about yeah. would not be affected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they would be because they're all the water sources are all sort of on the periphery in this whole yeah. thing. Okay. I was only asking that. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's just a yeah, possibility. I, yeah, it, it's possible. It's a plan B or something. Or, or to have that, op that option because I don't know. Um, I don't know enough about the sewer system. I mean, I'm just a, Yeah, and we don't either, but we're yeah. sort of going... As a off, off Travis's recommendation of what he saw the future improvements to the treatment system were going to be. Mm -hmm. And he didn't think that the footprint would be enlarged. Mm -hmm. But that's Travis. He's sure. gone. And sure. you yeah. know he was unreliable. So to base everything on what Travis said, I mean, I'm sure he had some credibility there, but I don't know what a deep dive he did into it. Yeah. And we have no idea. Yeah. If, was there anything written down or any questions? Asked on paper Don't and answered so. by no, him. No, no, it was just okay. verbal, knowing each okay. other and stuff. Okay. Your ground is not that big up there. Okay. We rely more on the high school and yeah. the subdivision below yeah. to get the amount of credits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to tie into the high school to get their water to build your oh. ground down because you guys have no water there. Okay. So, it's in a floodplain, though, isn't it? Well, that, yeah, but you got to you establish your plan, right. so we'd have okay. to have that water to get stuff started. Yeah, we have to establish Just like this one, yeah. you know, the water table's not too far down, Yeah. but yeah. plans have to be established yeah. to, get, to reach it. You can't make an agricultural well over there? <laughs> I don't know. Temporarily, till things get established? Well, you have to get the water right from somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't... There's not a lot of freebies and water rights yeah. around. Yeah. There is a ditch that runs right down through there, which you guys don't There's two ditches, water. isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was the name of that yeah, one? That's really that good ditch? water. Uh, Feldman Ditch. Feldman Ditch. Yeah. I can't remember what it goes down through there. It's paying it goes in down through right? the subdivision. Comes up. Goes I thought there were two right there. We were going to use the high school water. And the high school yeah, they kind of cross up a little across from the high school. And they've got farmers get water. Stevens Gulch. Talking about using their water. They combined everything. They're doing We're trying to pull four different entities together to make it all work. Well, if you don't have to worry about the subdivision developer because you don't need, you're not looking as big over there. Yeah. Is there some way to do a little bit of a land swap mm -hmm. between this and that so you compile two different yeah, town properties? We need, we need water. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, if the, I would if say it's possible. Yeah. I'd say it's possible, but yeah. time is of the essence. Right. Here too. Right. And speak of time, like, I mean, do you have like a couple months to do a deep dive into a new sewer? system and how big it would be and if we need a land for that or no no you have like what a month or... oh okay thank you i just wanted to read this from the sdm report which is what i brought up in the summer at this at the meeting um it is so they're talking about various uh new treatment treatment uh limits that the, the ultimately yeah. says yeah. as legislation oh, okay. progresses Paonia will likely need to abandon the existing lagoons and replace the system with a mechanical plant that is capable of nutrient removal. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what that means, but that was my concern, because okay. we don't uh, know, unless somebody here does, well, okay. I don't know what that mechanical well, we plant means. All we know is uh, basically what we heard from Travis, and he spoke those same words, but the, his conclusion was the same. The footprint 
wouldn't change. I'm sorry, but I think that's, we need to know. I, frankly, me personally, I would like to understand what a mechanical plant actually consists of. And, it, you know, is, are there alternatives? I have no idea. Maybe you guys should uh, go check out Delta, the town of Delta's uh, mechanical plant. Really? Get a tour from them, yeah. What's it, have you been? Yeah. What's it, just describe I, it. I couldn't, I don't know, it's, it's beyond beyond me. I, don't I mean, know. It, there was no more lagoons. There's no, correct. There's an open so it's, water theme, but it's not like a lagoon. Okay. And yeah. It's open water for like nitrification and stuff, which is basically like aeration. But they also have a digester, yeah. which they're sending in microbes and stuff. And then they're taking their sludge, and then they have to send off their sludge after so long after it's dried out to see if it's class A or B. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then they actually own a significant portion of farmland there that they lease out to somebody where they can then put their sludge over the so entire they, theme. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm a, just a little concerned that maybe the footprint's like not a, an issue, it's but, it's like a rotating but we, if, yeah. if we had to um, convert this property, mm -hmm. there would certainly, I would think, need to be some room for um, movement and for construction, mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I just wouldn't want to see us get such a narrow footprint that we have um, put ourselves well, from, in a corner. From your map, you can see this area but I will, I will. to the west of the yeah. ponds. I know there's sort of a oh yeah the whole parking lot yeah dump that, trash dump we won't be doing anything right with now. that and that is supposed to be yeah. uh, knowing what well, yeah and that's the thing have yeah, you guys talked know, about mm -hmm. this at all with the have you guys talked about the at all with the we're on this blue we'll line moving to towards the treatment plant, of course, and to the west of us, there's a section B. Mm -hmm. So section B is basically doesn't have any scouring going on. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot what, so you guys, what you're seeing here. Uh, it's pretty yeah. healthy in terms of there's a lot of cotton roots, but there would there would be some irrigation, as evidenced by the green line that kind of meanders through this whole section. And the whole idea is to try to get, you know, just more water and maybe turn parts of it into a little bit of a wetlands. And then the planting here is gonna be more towards uh, uh, shrubs to sort of help out with, you know, you have, so you have the three, the three levels, uh, high trees, shrubs, and then some grasses. I don't know if there's any grasses scheduled for section B. No. no, I don't think, I don't so. think so. I don't think there is. Yep. But uh, there will be some shrubs uh, after you have removal of, I think there's a fair amount of Russian olive in here. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I think so. That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> Behind us, <laughs> I don't know approximately where the, the line is, but, but most of this is private property. Mm. And I think it's either Fraser's or Lund. Lund's. Lund. 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 Fraser's. Yep. So where would that be on the map, the private property? Right over here. Okay. All right, thank you. So that we can't get them to control the Russian Yeah, like right yeah. here. Because mm -hmm. it's so close. Oh, yeah. Here, I like to yeah, so It smells so good. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't in that moment. Redeeming quality. So I just wanted to point out this section here as we're walking by. Get that out of the way. So there, any questions on this? <clears throat> you know, the hardest section to ask you is section D. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I right? don't think so. I think section A is going to be <laughs> But Mike Zeman, he was, his marching orders were, were to try to sign enough for your lawsuits. And so that's... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So cool. Yep. Could, could you describe in section A, you've got, it's called shelter belt area with all the red. So is the red... The red, red lines is, are piping. You, so it's you, drip irrigation. Yeah, so you're going to bring in, uh, concentrate on bringing in trees and shrubs? No, that's What's, going to be all grasses. Oh, okay. So and, why is it called shelter belt area? Um, I don't know. Cassandra, do you know? Shelter I think belt. there. I think there is some tree plantings in there. There are? Yeah, th in section A. I thought there was going to be some, some shrubs and stuff put in. That, uh -huh. That's in the field up there in section A. Yeah, I was thinking that... 
Yeah, in that field, it was going to be mostly grasses because there was some discussion on going ahead and harvesting that. It were. Travis mm. was talking about going ahead and planting them to make it wide enough so it could even swath it through it. Right. Put hay or yeah, they could use a brush beater and knock, knock the grasses down. He just wants stuff far enough apart where you'd have room to run the machinery, mm -hmm. is right. what Travis was saying. So that's the, sh the shelter belt idea is that if you establish the shrubs, that that will help the grasses the grasses will, mm -hmm. will thrive because those shrubs will provide protection from the wind and some shade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so you would not then propose haying it? No, talking then, more. Maybe you can hay, hay strips of it. Just strips of it, like up in between. Or mm -hmm. He said it could be narrow enough just as long as they get a brush hog up through there and keep the grass down. Mm -hmm. You want to keep it mowed, you know, and kind of, you know, keep it knocked down. Mm -hmm. And the that shrubs, was his suggestion. Yeah. And shrubs would have to be held back too. You couldn't let them tip over. Right, yeah. right. I mean, kind of like an orchard. You just, I mean, it, yeah. it requires some management. Requires depending management. on, I guess I'd ask, what's the ultimate um, goal here for this area? Is it to be self contained, no human implements? Yeah, what you would hope need? for is the irrigation up here is going to be uh, pretty intensive at, as you can see by all those little right. lines but um, at least part of the year there's some water table up there it might be kind yep. of low late in the year but uh, the idea would be to put in things that could survive that somewhat well and you you your whole thing is wildlife habitat right That's correct so what kind of habitat are you thinking you would provide here then because it's got to be tied to habitat Correct. Yeah, it's all credit. about yeah. It's all about eventually taking down the fence and uh, letting all the critters come in, and because uh, that's really what's happening up on the main pipeline. Is we're bringing a pipeline through, and uh, there's quite a there's quite a bit of habitat mm -hmm. for wildlife that mm -hmm. are, that's going to be wiped out. Mm -hmm. sure. And for us, that's like 120 of these lost credits or lost units, I mm -hmm. should say. So that's what the whole idea here is to make this healthy enough so it's a sustaining habitat. So the big, the big animals can come in, they can do some feeding, and when they when they leave, they don't leave the place a mess. You know, mm -hmm. There's still there's still that a lot of viability grains. here, and everything mm -hmm. kind of recovers. Well, it seems like you wouldn't want to be hanging in there because of um, nesting and. I mean, you're promoting for wildlife, not mm -hmm. cattle or horses. But but you could be using one of these ideas where you where you do some uh, hang of, of strips, and you're only doing that because it benefits the overall plan of what's going on up here. It, you might you might see a situation develop where you don't want to do any hay. I've seen too many animals in hay. Yeah. <laughs> Snakes, birds. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen too many smashed animals. So my point is, yeah. it's, I don't know, is, do you sacrifice a few for the hay? I, again, and I haven't read your yeah. report, but it seems like that is more important. I think Mike, than Mike Zeman addresses hay. that in his first 19 pages. So okay. I would say, uh, see what he has to say. Um, if, he, if he were here, he'd have a... You'd have an answer. Coach it, yeah. Nice yeah. Response. yeah. None of us wrote so, that plan. Are there going to be deed restrictions on the delicious orchard property? Because you know yeah. he could get a zoning change, on, or there's no zoning. There's no zoning in the county. There is um, some zoning. And have it well, turned into to the, like residential well, acre acre. point. So and that could change the whole water situation there. So um, you know you might not get tail water at some point. So are there any deed restrictions with him if he's coming in? To things. The answer is no. Um, the water for this whole area up here is mainly coming from the farmers' okay. ditch shares, which are always going to be there. Okay. They belong to the town. Yeah. Uh, the only thing in jeopardy if, if uh, Jeff decides to build condos all the way around here and take out his orchard, um, hmm. then uh, the tailwater would disappear. Uh, He'd have to be careful about that, such that he doesn't lose his water rights only. Because remember, his water rights are ag water rights. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's true. They're not arbitrary. Yeah. There's always a chance if he had water or didn't want it, could sell some, town could pick up the right. shares. He, he could do that. do that. You know, he has, um, I think he's got about eight shares of farmers. Yeah. He brings down two or three from the same location where we're going to bring down your mm. two. But I think there's another five or more that he takes 
ETFs yep, so. to the east yep. in the orchard. <coughs> and from my understanding, there's not necessarily a lot of wastewater off that because he is irrigating trays and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be some, but there may not be a whole mm -hmm. lot. What we're going to rely on is your farmer ditch water because it's steady. It's there right. all exactly. the time. And something else Travis had brought up too, it's not a case if you plant these stuff out here in the field, you can make it wide enough where you can still put your sludge out. Yeah, I was going to ask that. I say, because, you know, it's yeah. still that option there where you still have your ground and you still be able to put your sludge out. Right. So, Without hurting the animal. Yeah. <laughs> right, and fertilizing the ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're fertilizing yeah. the ground, you're yeah. taking care of your own ground. So mm -hmm. you can still put your sludge out there on your own right. ground, just make it wide enough for you to be able to spread it and get up through there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's part of what contract or a lock-in for anything, uh, a yes. license agreement, yeah. Oh, for how long, like a 50 years? 50 years as well. Yeah, I mean, all these things are going to have 50 years, yeah. uh, basically. Okay. After 50 years. <laughs> so he has the same sort of lock-in agreement. So it'll be on a deed, because he's not going to... I don't think it's going to be on years. What happens when he... Well, the, the agreement goes with the land. Goes with the land. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking about what he has agreed to do with you. Oh, the only thing he's agreed to do with us is the tail water. Okay. okay. Seems like it. Yeah. And we can file on it. There's already mechanisms in place when it comes to water rights, whether it's primary or tail or mm -hmm. whatever. So that you can do. So yep. we can with do it. If the water's there, we use it. If it's not, we don't worry about it. Another right. thing you need to think about the field up there, putting on your ear of fluid and stuff like that, too. If you don't want to hay it, if you don't want to brush hog it, same thing. You would be, you know, wildlife coming in and graze it. Once your plants are tall enough to bring short period of time, bring cattle in and graze it. You need to take care of your growth because mm -hmm. your growth, grasses mm -hmm. and stuff, if it keeps, if it grows and stuff like that, it doesn't get eaten off and stuff for long, it dies. It doesn't grow anymore. So you need to mitigate that somewhere along the line, either brush hogging it, cut it for hay. Or come in grazing livestock, goats. You know, I know goats. goats. I was thinking goats that. would work good. I goats mean, you, work you really need to well. manage that. You need to manage that. Grass. Why Those are you pushing? Can be quite the management problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering why you're pushing so much for grass out here, which requires. Well, historically, it was grass. Okay. That's the only reason. But I'm getting. I'm asking about <laughs> wildlife habitat. Has that all been considered? You know, is grass the best use of this in terms of wildlife habitat that requires? You know, some grazing, or yeah. I'm just well, asking the deer. Yeah, deer and elk, I think, are the main two animals. Uh, yeah. Elk are more of a grazer, and deer are more of a browser. That's mm -hmm. right. So the deer is going to be into the shrubs and the tree bark, and who knows what else. But um, but I think elk, which was kind of like the main big animal, I, they're more of a grazer. Mm -hmm. you know, no if there's grass and ground, that's where they're going to go first. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If you're doing subsurface drip, I don't think you want to have tree roots into that. I mean, what a nightmare that would be if you ever had to rip it out and all that plastic is supposed to that picture. So that's why I think it keeps subsurface drip with, uh, with uh, grass, basically. I don't know if it's compatible with... The, the uh, subsurface drip can be used for anything. Yeah. Used for trees, grass, shrubbery. Yeah. In my orchard, I use it for both grass and for trees. Um, I don't see this, you know, the hope would be that you wouldn't need this for 50 years. Right. Yeah. Uh, at some point, you could just sort of quit using it, and uh, hopefully that everything is established well enough to take care of itself. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I don't like the idea of leaving a bunch of plastic buried. Well, you could rip it out. I <laughs> yeah, mean, but that's then the it, thing. It, it negates the establishment. Well, not necessarily, because you're not ripping up the yeah, entire no. thing. No. But yeah, you're, you're ripping up pieces. Be yeah. small tubes that are about... Yeah about four or five feet apart. When you look at the cones that are around, the moisture cones underneath, and you lay these tubes about four or five feet apart. Yeah. So if you were to rip it out, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be doing some small trenching right. every four to five feet. Right. Yeah. So most of it's still going to be there, and it'll grow in quick. But has that been contemplated in your plan? 
recovery. In the, plan, that plastic in the plan, the irrigation is not in place. Yeah, I just, I mean, everything because we know about plastic. Know. Uh, I'm maybe, sorry. Maybe we should see the plan first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we don't have the plan. No. You will <laughs> have the plan this <laughs> afternoon. It's on its way. We gave you the plan yeah. last October. Yeah. Well, that was the preliminary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I, I want to be, I want to be clear, Paul. That we, as in me, as an individual, mm -hmm. I don't have a plan. Town has been granted <laughs> given a plan, but town did not. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know, yeah. so, so we, on the outside looking in, we assume the town mm -hmm. is right. all homogeneous and right. <laughs> 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 all the stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just want to say, like, from a land use planning <laughs> standpoint, some of the points that you're bringing up are excellent and could be incorporated into our plan as mitigating measures right. and i think that's part of this yeah. process and again it's just my opinion mm -hmm. and the trustees have to yeah, speak as a whole decide. i'm just bringing up things yeah. that i don't know what's in the plan either mm -hmm. but <laughs> these are things well the like, things that are wait. that you think of that are important mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. as the landowner and that's part of this process mm -hmm. and so the, this what we're what we're trying to do is get the license agreement signed so that we can get to the next stage which would be negotiating some of these finer mm -hmm. details and in a memorandum of understanding that would be the next thing and so um, the license agreement is in the first 19 pages okay um, yeah. it's yeah it's actually it's a it's, it's, in, an it's, appendix, it's in an appendix but it's a separate <coughs> document right but there's a, a contract in those first 19 pages oh is there Okay. Yeah, there's yeah, there's both block. big, yeah, okay. big bees and the town. Okay. okay. Plastic is you're trying to improve your efficiency for your water, which is why we're piping it down mm -hmm. so we can get our water down. It'd be the same thing here. You're trying to stretch your water further to make sure you've got enough to cover everything. And I kind of understand where you're coming from, but plastic's a big part of that. So yeah. Just trying to improve, make sure we get everything covered. I don't know if have you ever ir No, no, no. I mean the regular irrigation with the holes, the gated pipe. Gated pipe. Yeah. Could that be done? Yeah. And then right. that's easily picked that's up. That's flood irrigation. Yeah. Right. So for flood irrigation, you need 60% more water exactly. than what, you're gonna, what the crop is going to use. Yep. Right. Well, then it so seems like you match the crop to the, to the mess. Anyway, I just feel like there's not been enough. I haven't read it, but. Yeah. I, so why don't you read the plan and we can mm -hmm. read yep. yeah. and then I'll have, have my questions lined out. <laughs> that's what we're that's no. what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, flood irrigation. It's great if you have lots of water mm -hmm. because you will be using only forty percent of it. Most of the water you need just to get the flow across the land. Mm -hmm. And that's in this country. That's what's given rise to the salinity problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> in the Colorado River in the first place right. is lots and lots of flood irrigation because that just leaches everything, mm -hmm. all the salts, mm -hmm. out, of the, out of your farm down into the main drainage. But this is only for five years. This is only for five years. So this so, tailwater from Schwartz, okay. is he doing flood irrigation and we're going to get his salinity to pump in our subsurface Probably. system? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, probably. I, but know, again, it's five years. Okay. His, his land, I don't quite know what he uses okay. to irrigate. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. some of it is sprinklers and yeah, some there's is... there's some big um, sprinklers yeah. that run. Some, some is sprinklers, but I think too. some is also flood irrigation. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what he's doing, from what I could tell a few years back, is I think he's transitioning all the original flood mm -hmm. out. And he's doing, doing it you know, piece by piece. Yeah. That's why we may not get a whole lot of water right, off exactly. because he's changing too. Example on the irrigation, just to show you, I don't know if been, you guys know where B Burns is, a big center pivot. They irrigate 130 acres of that. He can cover that ground in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It takes me five weeks off a ditch. Yeah. yeah. That's your yeah. efficiency. That's right. what you're looking mm -hmm. at. Yep. I mean, and he's growing yep. twice the amount of crop under the sprinklers that he mm -hmm. does his open ditch. Well, to me, but, it's the thought of what's the crop. If you're, I mean, maybe grass is not what you want to be growing here. Yeah. If you have to but impose... You know, add this drip system. That's that has just a, yeah, our, the guy that wrote <laughs> this plan, uh, he has a lot of experience with all this stuff. So again, I would say, uh, read the plan, mm -hmm. and then we can yeah. get together and have a, a more detailed conversation if you want, and, and Mike Zeman can be at the table so he can address some of these. This things. sounds like a work session, potentially, mm -hmm. to potentially. have, because I, my questions, until I read it, may or may not right. go away. We, we may be able to get the plan 
before our meeting tonight? Yes. I'm not going to read it tonight. I'm, I'm, I, don't think, I don't think that would be possible. Well, it's only 19 pages. No, I have other stuff to read okay. for tonight. We, we, Sorry. May, we, <laughs> we may be able to get the plan before our meeting tonight, and then we can schedule a work session based on uh, whether or not we have it. Mm -hmm. I would think it should it would be better to make it part of the agenda packet for our first meeting in May. It is. It's going okay. to be. Okay, but um, because... We can make sure that that's the case. Yeah, I just no. want to make sure everybody's getting everything at the same time. Yeah. And it's not on the agenda for tonight to create a Correct. work session. Correct. So, um, anyway, I'm just... Right. Well, we yeah. can ga ga yeah. gather what information we can mm -hmm. at the meeting on the 12th and then if we need more we can always schedule a work session at that point yeah yeah because my questions need to be asked in public really if i still have them after reading mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. yeah because i'm again i'm just one trustee just going what what, yeah, yeah. what about so it all has to be done yeah, yeah. Okay, I would say in the interest of time, mm -hmm. yes. I think you've seen about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you noticed we were sort of out there today, but um, Section C down here in orange, uh, it's not a lot of, lot different than this, except that you have, you have dead and down cottonwoods everywhere, because that portion is the portion that was dried up when the mm -hmm. ponds were installed. Mm -hmm. So they've seen the most, the most damage. Okay. And there's some plantings scheduled for that area mm -hmm. and for this area mm -hmm. too. So, okay. Show me section C. I'm sorry. I'm just going, I'm going to uh, side. No, you shouldn't be looking Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's blue. <laughs> well, I just am not seeing the C. That's all.